Hi, it's Money44 here and today I invite you to a short review of Psonic Upgrade products. The products for the test were made available by Gunfire. Psonic Upgrades is an Italian company that produces dedicated hop-up buckings, air hop sets and arms for hop-up chambers. Their products are characterized by a unique silicon frame mixture used for production an innovative design of the buckings themselves. The manufacturer is aware that many manufacturers produce their replicas or barrels in their own standard, which is slightly different from other standards, which is why Psonic offers products dedicated to specific companies. Today I will show you a lot of their products and I will mount some of them in my replicas and see how they will perform. If you're interested in a particular model, the video is divided into chapters devoted to them. Remember, however, that the performance that I receive in my replicas may be better or worse than what you will achieve. So let's start with the buckings that I installed in my replicas and the first of them will be the CM030 and the TOW R bucking dedicated to AAP replicas. Each Psonic product comes to us in a small colorful cardboard box, on which, apart from information about the product model, we'll find the information that it's made in Italy. In the set dedicated to AAP replicas, of course, we'll find the hop-up bucking itself, the TOW R line, which for my own convenience I will simply call TOR, is characterized by a large contact patch that fills the entire window in the barrel. The bucking is made of fairly soft and flexible material. In addition to the bucking, the set includes a piece of self-adhesive sponge that can be glued to the pressure arm in the replica if we need a stronger pressure of the bucking. Assembly in the replica was easy. In the CM030 I didn't need to add pressure sponge because with the maximum setting you can easily see the contact patch. Sonic recommends this bucking for performance between 0.5 and 1 Joule and BBs between 0.20 gram and 0.25 gram. My CM030 on 0.25 gram Spesa Arms HBO BBs generates only about 0.27 Joules with the hop-up set. The target I'm shooting at is 60 cm in diameter. I had no problem shooting accurate shots at 20 meters. as well as 30 meters. With this muscle energy, it's still a very good result. Let's face it, from such a distance probably no one will feel it anyway. Another product is Matrix X Gen 2 bucking for AEG replicas. In the package we'll find the Matrix X bucking the characteristic feature of which is a patch in the form of free protrusions, which Psonic calls Trident, and which is to help in the proper placement of the BB and its even spin. All AEG buckings have ribs on the outside to help achieve great seal. The buckings themselves are a bit shorter than the standard ones. The material from which the bucking is made is quite soft. With the bucking in set, we get dedicated medium-sized nub, similar in shape to Omega nubs. I will mount the bucking in my Spesa Arms SAH-12 replica. The replica has a factory chamber and barrel. But before I mount the bucking, let's jump for a second to another Psynic product, which is the pressure arm for M4 replicas. The arm itself is made of polymer and has a movable element holding the knob, which is to ensure vertical pressure on the hop-up bucking and more even spin of the BBs. The arm is dedicated, among others, to the Spesa Arms chambers and when I compare it to the factory one, the dimensions match. In the set with the arm we get a medium nub, which I will use here. Back to the matrix bucking. Its installation took place without any problems. It entered the chamber with a slight resistance, so it should keep the seal well. The arm fits perfectly and there is no lateral movement. With medium nub I also had no problem with the full extension of the patch. You don't need much force to push the BB through the collar, but you can feel that it puts up a slight resistance. The bucking is dedicated to replicas with power between 0.5 and 1.5 joules on 0.25 or 28 gram BBs. I conducted this shooting test on 0.28 gram Spesa Arms Edge BBs and the replica on them generates about 0.95 joules with the hop up set. At 30 meters the accuracy is very good and I had no problems hitting the target both on semi and auto.
At 40 meters, the dispersion increased a bit, but I still had no problems hitting the target. There were a few missed shots at 50 meters, but most hit the target anyway. As I already had to aim at the top of the target, so I didn't see the point of testing at 60 meters. The next backing is Tor, dedicated to AAGs. The backing has a characteristic large patch, ribs and it's a little shorter than standard backings. It's also quite soft. The set includes two knobs, small and medium. I will install the backing in my Spesna Arms SAB12 replica, in which the Spesna Arms edge chamber and slung barrel are mounted. The assembly of the backing on the barrel was trouble-free. It sat very well and entered the chamber with considerable resistance. In this Spesna Arms edge chambers, I recommend installing a medium knob which will allow for a full adjustment of the pressure. In this set, the BB spaces almost without resistance. Sonic recommends this backing for replicas with performance between 0.5 and 2 joules, and BBs between 0.28 and 0.32 gram for 1 joule. My SAB12 on 0.32 gram Spesa Arms Edge BBs generates around 1.05 joules. At the distance of 30 meters I had no problem hitting the target, but you can see an uneven spin of some shots. At 40 meters I also had no problem hitting the target, some shots were a bit more spinned and a bit more spread was visible. At 50 meters you can see more and more uneven spin and there were occasional flyers to the sides. Encouraged by the results at 50 meters, I moved to 60 meters, and from that distance, the uneven spin and sideways spread made it much harder to hit, but a few shots landed. So, just for over one joule, I think it's pretty good result. It's time for the star of the program, that is the R-Hub set, here dedicated to maple leaf barrels. In the set we get a flat hub backing, that is one without a contact patch element. The backing has of course ribs and is slightly shorter than a regular backing. Apart from the backing, we get a patch for the barrel window dedicated to maple leaf barrels, it's made really precisely. In addition, the set includes two knobs, small and medium, and captain tape. The kit is relatively easy to install. We put the patch on the window and check if it sits correctly. As you can see, it's perfect. Secure the patch against movement with captain tape and cut off the excess so that it does not enter the groove. Check if the BB passes without resistance and put on the backing. I will mount this set in the ENL LX74N replica from Essential Series. The backing enters the ENL chamber with a clear resistance on the ribs of the backing which should ensure seal. I installed a low knob, but the patch is still visible. The BBs pass through the collar with more resistance than in previous replicas, but there were no problems with feeding. Sonic recommends air hop sets for replicas with power between 0.5 and 1.5 joules and BBs between 0.28 and 32 gram for 1 joule. Elac 74N on 0.32 gram Spesna Arms Edge BBs generates about 1.52 joules, so I would say it's perfect. At 30 meters I had no problem with hitting and the shots themselves were characterized by very good grouping.
Similarly, at 40 meters here, the grouping deteriorated a bit. At 50 meters, it was a bit worse. I had more missed shots. You can see the deterioration of the spread and sometimes uneven spin of the BBs. From 60 meters it was even harder to hit, but still quite a few shots hit the target. I will just add that the set has no problem with spinning very heavy BBs. Here out of curiosity I shot 0.33 gram BBs at 70 meters. I missed the target, but you can see that the BBs landed under it, so yes, you can use heavier ammunition. The last backing I will test is the TOR model dedicated to VSR replicas. In the set of course we get a backing with a contact patch element now to us. Small nub and a sponge that can be used as a nub. I will mount the bucking in the SFC VSR-10 replica. The bucking easily fits over the TNT barrel. For VSR replicas, Psonic also has a hop-up arm. It's made of polymer, has a place for medium nap that we get in the set. Thanks to its construction it should provide even vertical pressure, but I did not install it because in my chamber it sits with a lot of play on the pin. The bucking is recommended for replicas with power between 0.8 and 2.5 joules and BBs between 0.28 and 0.36 grams. My replica on 0.43 gram VLS BO BBs generates 2.8 joules, so a lot beyond the recommended values, but let's see how it works. We start with 50 meters. From this distance, each shot hit a target with a diameter of 60 centimeters. I missed only once from 60 meters. From 70 meters it was a bit worse, but a hit was still not a big problem. From 80 meters it was very similar, but you can see that this is the end of the range, so I didn't test at 90 meters. I think it would still be possible to hit, I will just have to aim over the target.
In addition to the backings that I have now presented to you, Sonic offers among others such models as Tor for GBBR GHK replicas, Arhop set dedicated to Prometheus BC Bright Barrels, to PSS-10 Lilacs VSR-10, this set includes two patches, to Prometheus Crytek Barrels, to Prometheus EG Barrels and some GNG Barrels, this set also includes two patches, Arhop set dedicated to Mudball Black Python Barrels, and many other sets that you can see on the manufacturer's website, link in the description of the video. Backings are also available on Gunfire, to which you can also find the link in the description. What do I think about Sonic products? I essentially like the fact that the manufacturer approached the issue in such detail and prepared products tailored exactly to their given solution. In the sets themselves we get everything we need, including often as many as two knobs of different sizes, which can be useful among others in edge chambers where it is better to mount a higher knob. When it comes to the operation of the buckings, I have nothing to complain about them in the replicas in which I installed them. They worked properly and I had no problems with them and in my opinion they gave completely satisfactory results. In in addition to the test that I showed in the material, the Matrix X backing was also mounted in a fully stock replica, the SAJ08, and I took it for one game where it did very well. About 0.9 joules on 0.30 gram Spesa Arms 1 BBs allowed me to hit targets even 50 meters away from me and with a quite good gripping. In my opinion, Sonic products are in an interesting proposition, especially for low-powered replicas. Both the Matrix model and the Tor at about 1 joule did a very good job in my opinion, and I know that I will definitely use their products in other my replicas. That's all for today. Let me know how you liked today's video and what do you think about Sonic upgrade products, and if you use them, in what replica and how they'd work for you. And for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.